and sports this afternoon with some golf action. Now, yesterday at Mudaiga, we had the Kenya Junior Stroke Play Golf Championships for boys and girls. 67 youngsters took part in that competition, where the winner will be taking part in the Royal and Ancient Open later on in the year. I got a chance of speaking to Junior Golf Foundation President, that is Regina Gashora, and she says such championships will help youngsters in the country to develop, uh, rather to grow in the sport. And aside from that, uh, I asked her, how does, she, how does she feel knowing that there's a lot of pressure in ensuring that uh, she delivers the next generation of golf stars in the country? Let's take a listen. So the championship is our most elite championship. Uh, it's a four-day tournament, uh, stroke play championship. And uh, this tournament is even more important because it is the qualifier for the RNA Open. So the Open is the most exclusive uh, tournament in the world. And just before the Open, they have the RNA Open, which is for junior 16 and under. So on this tournament, uh, the best boy and girl under 16, we will take them to Scotland just be before the Open. They will play the RNA Open. It will also be a four-day uh, tournament. And they will play with the best from around the world. There will be about 120 countries participating. So this is a chance for them to play with uh, the big boys in the rest of the world. We've seen an increase in the number of, uh, you know, championships for uh, young players in the country. For example, you have the stroke play this week. Next weekend, you have Kabete. I mean, what has necessitated this? Well, what we've learned is the more you practice, the better you become. So we have about 41 tournaments in our calendar all around the country. What we want is these juniors to be able to compete with each other on a consistent basis because what we are seeing and we've been able to see in the last two years is because they have opportunities to play against each other almost every other week, um, they are able to now play better. So even if you look at the handicaps that are with the juniors, the top 20 juniors now and what they were uh, two years ago, most of the top 20 are single handicaps. And uh, 20 years, I mean, uh, two years ago, it was probably maybe three or four were single and then the rest had uh, much higher handicaps. So what we are doing is we, have, we are using these tournaments to push the juniors to become better players. And then we are using the exposure through international tournaments for them to now be able to compete with the rest of the world and be able to benchmark where they need to be if they ever want to get college scholarships, if they ever want to go pro, if they ever want to win the Kenya Open these tournaments are helping them get there faster. Speaking of internationals, uh, last uh, uh, two weeks ago, we had Kenyans, uh, rather young Kenyans, taking part in the Big Five in uh, South Africa. How was it? So South Africa is good. It's a good learning area because South Africa, like Europe and the US, they are about the same uh, at par in terms of their level of golf. It's very high. So our juniors, the best performance um, was fourth place uh, by Simaloi uh, from the girls' side, Ishan Patel from the boys' side. Um, compared to South Africa, um, they were middle. They were middle, uh, middle of the field. Mm -hmm. Then we had the tournament, the NCBA tournament in Uganda, where Kenya cleaned house. As in most of the, the, the tournaments, age groups, uh, Kenyans were number one. Uh, in those tournaments. So the good news is that two years ago it used to be half Uganda, half Kenya. Yes. This year it was, we just cleaned house. Uganda, uh, in, in, um, in South Africa, uh, we used to be the bottom, now we're in the middle, mm -hmm. which means that we're advancing. Um, so these tournaments, very, very important for our juniors to be able to participate in because then it shows progress. It shows that they're moving in the right direction. And if they're middle of the pack in South Africa, it means in two years they'll be able to be in the top three. Speaking of, uh, you know, uh, a few years back we could not, you know, make it to the top three. We could, Uganda, we, it was 50-50. Now there's a chance of, you know, showing Africa what you've got. And then you have the All Africa Games qualifiers. I mean, uh, how are you preparing the team for that? Okay, so our team started training in November. Uh, we decided this year that the team was going to train for at least six months before they go out. Mm -hmm. So they started training first week of November. Um, they have been training uh, since then, three days a week. Uh, we had had one coach uh, from South Africa who came in October, 
who did an, a high performance camp and that's something that we want to continue to do. Uh, but they're training three days a week with a national coach and CJ Wangai. They are looking good um, from the scores that we had yesterday. Um, all the players in the elite squad uh, were in the top 10, mm -hmm. which shows that the training is actually working and most of them were playing in the 70s. So it just shows that the level of golf has really, really moved forward. In terms of handicaps, most of them have slashed their handicaps by six or seven strokes, mm -hmm. which is huge. So we are looking towards at least podium finish boys, podium finish girls. Girls were even pushing to see whether they can finish second place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's talk about funding and sponsorship for Junior Golf Foundation and uh, NCBA has been, uh, you know, uh, partnering with you to in, in, in these tournaments. How big of a step is that? It's a huge step, um, huge, huge step. So we have a big budget for the year. Um, we spend about 7 million shillings on tournaments. We spend another 13 million shillings on uh, golf development. Mm -hmm. Golf development in the regions and golf development here in Nairobi and in Mombasa. And then we spend another uh, 7 million in tournaments. So we have three big tournaments, the All Africa, we have the RNA Open, and then we have Faldo Series, uh, which the juniors can uh, be able to um, uh, qualify for. Mm -hmm. So with such a big budget, when NCBA is coming in with 12 million, it means they're touching all areas, they're touching tournaments, they're touching golf development, not just in Nairobi, Mombasa, mm -hmm. but also regions around the country. But they're also touching on uh, assisting us with our international tournaments. So that is a big step. Uh, we would want more corporates to be able to come on board. We are moving forward. Uh, JGF is uh, really, really transforming uh, golf in this country. It is from junior golf that we will get our next amateurs and our next pros. And we are pushing for the best of the best um, um, coming out of this cohort group so that by the time they move to amateur golf, they are at a, a elite level. And by the time now they become pro level, as we see in, in the Kenya Open, you know, when there's a top 20, at least we have five pros in the top 20. We're not talking about missing cut or making cut. We're talking about at least five pros will be in the, will be in the top 20. Uh, gunning for that uh, 2.5 million dollars. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how do you handle the pressure of uh, knowing that you know you are the person that is in charge of uh, uh, ensuring that you know the next Kenya's next generation of uh, top golfers uh, comes from this cohort that you have at the moment? So the easiest way to handle pressure is put in the work. Mm -hmm. So we as JGF are putting in the work. We're putting in the work by putting more tournaments that the juniors can play. We are putting in the work in terms of making sure that our coaches are trained. We are now at 100 uh, certified coaches, level one, level two. Every region has at least five certified coaches. We are putting in the work in making sure that the regions are uplifted to a point where we can now fully dis demystify golf because the more the, the, we call it the funnel, the more people at the bottom of the funnel, the more uh, uh, people that we have who can then rise up and become um, elite golfers. We are looking for more Elvis Muiguas um, who came to us um, uh, when he, he came to us when he was 18 years old and he was our wild card for um, the All Africa Junior Championship. He had never gotten formal training. You can see where he is now. So these are the people we're looking. We're looking for more Elvis Muiguas who can come in. We can train them. We can find them, discover them, create an environment where they can thrive and then push them up where they can be better amateur golfers and then soon become better pros. Uh, J, uh, rather JF, uh, JGF has partnered with US Kids Golf. Last year you brought in a coach uh, from uh, the US. Have you already started seeing, uh, you brought in a coach from the US to you know, give uh, some uh, insights to our Kenyan coaches and also you know, give some lessons to our youngsters. Have you started seeing the fruits? Oh yes, uh, so he has come, last year was the third year. Mm -hmm. So the first year they came two coaches, they trained 47. Mm -hmm. Then we, the next year, he trained another 10. And then um, uh, in December, he trained another uh, 40 coaches. So we have over 100 coaches. Mm -hmm. What it has done is every region is now covered. Mm -hmm. Before, we had some regions that maybe only had one coach, and one coach was trying to cover, you know, uh, four or five counties. Now we have about five coaches in each, in each region, which means every county is, is taken care of. 
Uh, in terms of training, um, we have bought, we have deployed 200 sets of equipment. We have another uh, 200 sets coming in that we will deliver to uh, the regions. We are looking at uh, uh, DP World giving us more golf balls, which we shall deploy. And then we do uh, free training, especially in the rural areas where kids cannot afford to play golf. And this is, uh, uh, an, is not a sport that is in their area. So by doing all these things, what we're doing is we're growing the base. And once you grow the base, now you're able to uplift uh, the level of coaching that um, uh, comes to these juniors, but also the level of golf that we are seeing. And in the last two years, I can assure you, the level of golf we've seen in the last two days is amazing. Yesterday, it rained. And these golfers were still playing in the 70s. So it means that they, they even know how to adapt to when it's raining to still be able to play good golf, which is just showing that we are in the right direction, right path. Now, I want us to still stick with golf, and it's all about the juniors. Yes, 